Yo, what is up guys? It's the Goblin and today's video is gonna be absolutely awesome. We are talking about the best gun, the best assault rifle in Modern Warfare as of right now. It just came out this game a couple days ago and one gun really stands out a lot more than the rest for its time to kill and its damage at range and a lot of other reasons. That is the M4A1. This gun is in my opinion the best gun in the game and it seems from what I'm looking around it seems like the community has come to that consensus as well. Now there might be some other people that think other weapons are uh, better than this one, but I think that uh, this one may be receiving a nerf sometime soon because it looks like this is what everyone is using the most and people are getting really good results with it. So let's talk about this M4A1. Let's talk about this weapon. Why is it so good and what is the best classed up for it? I'm going to go super in depth into the attachments on this weapon because how classed ups work in this game, it's like I can give you the best attachments for level 60, but if you're level one with the weapon, what can you really do with that info? So we'll go really in depth into the attachments here later in the video. First, we'll talk about this weapon. We'll talk about the variant that you, that you can get for this weapon, and we'll talk about what makes it so good and what you want to run on the class up as far as perks and lethal and tactical and stuff like that. Drop a like on this video if you guys could. Let's go ahead and go for 702 likes. Your support has been absolutely amazing lately on this game. I've, I've been really uh, thankful for all your support. So drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new and not already subscribed, and let's go ahead and get right into it. Now, first of all, this weapon is just absolutely amazing. It kills at range in a split second. The recoil is a tiny bit vertical. I mean, the recoil on most of these guns are fairly controllable on the assault rifle category in this game. And this weapon also has a super fast time to kill. It can literally compete and sometimes outclass SMGs up close. It is pretty much unbalanced at this point, and I'm would almost, I would probably bet money actually that this gun would probably get nerfed a little bit in the future. But who knows what's going to happen? Obviously, when patch notes come out in the future, I will update and everything. But we don't know. Just going off my knowledge of Call of Duty, I don't think this weapon should be this good. But it is as of right now. And so why not use it? And why not have fun with this thing? Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about this weapon. That's what makes it so good. Uh, this is one of the earlier unlocked weapons in the assault rifle category. And it is just an absolute monster. You don't really have to think about, is it good on this map? Or is it bad on this? It's good on every map. That's basically the point. Now, this weapon also has a bonus that comes with it. Which, what the bonus is, is it was if you purchased your copy digitally. Now, I'm not sure if there's any restrictions. I'm not sure if this is like PS4 only or if it's all consoles. I'm not, I really don't know. I know on PS4, if you purchase on digital, you got the XRK weapons pack, which included a pistol variant. And it also included this M4 XRK variant. Now, the thing about this variant is it's very interesting because uh, basically, you know how they say, you know, it's not pay to win and they're not selling DLC weapons. You can earn everything, which I guess is true. The thing is that if you have this weapon, which I didn't even really realize I had this weapon until like a couple hours into playing the game. The way you find this is go under your assault rifles and as you're clicking which uh, assault rifle you want to pick, you will see a little pop out on the right that says plus one and you will go to that and click your variant. Now, I don't know if there's any restrictions. I don't know who exactly has this weapon, but I know a lot of people have it because uh, people, of course, buying digitally is very, very popular in 2019. Now, this comes with a different iron sights, which you will see uh, in my gameplays. I really do like the iron sights on this. It makes them a little bit bigger and sort of easier to see your enemy. I do like the default sight on this weapon as well, but the iron sights that come with this variant are absolutely amazing as well. And it also comes with a bunch of pre-ready attachments, which is... Interesting. It's interesting, right? They say it's not pay to win. They're not going to sell weapons, but you do get an advantage by having this because you get a bunch of uh, attachments that aren't unlocked until later that people have to grind for, and you sort of get them off of default. And I'll talk about that more when I go into the attachments later in this video. You'll see me break down pretty much everything to do with this. If you have this variant, if you don't have this variant, you don't have to worry because all the attachments are still earnable and the same. You just may have to grind more. And I talk about you know best uh, best attachments for when you're leveling up through the levels and. And then once you hit to around level 60, what to switch out on your weapon. But first of all, before we get into the attachments, because I talk about that quite a bit later, it is very in-depth. The classed up uh, videos on this game are going to be kind of intense because there's like, uh, it seems like a hundred attachment options, right? But first of all, let's go in and talk about the actual simple classed up. What do I rock on the simple simple class it up. Now, I rock uh, three perks, of course, and then a lethal and a tactical. As far as secondary, in my opinion, just rock with your favorite um, uh, your favorite handgun. You probably won't need it too often because of what I like to run with ex either sleight of hand or extended mags on the weapon. You shouldn't be pulling out that pistol too often, so it shouldn't be too much of a concern. When we go with perk one, I like to rock with EOD for perk one. EOD is important. It gives you reduced damage from non-killstreak explosive, so you can actually survive claim 
claymores with this. Uh, sometimes you will be able to, you know, survive grenades or different sort of explosives. And the way that, the, you know, it's not a pick 10 system in this game, so every player has a lethal on their class setup. So there's a lot of stuff flying around that can blow you up. EOD basically counters that out, and it's essentially flak jacket to make it simple. Um, of course, kill streaks will still do full damage to you, but non kill streak explosives. It also allows you to hack enemy equipment, which is kind of cool. I mean, I haven't really used it too much. I tried to hack an enemy claymore, but you have to pull out the iPad and sit there. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. You know, to call in uh, an airstrike or one, one of those clusters, you don't use the iPad anymore, which kind of pisses me off because I love that from Black Ops 2. But to hack a claymore, you don't just tap into the back of the claymore. I got to pull out this iPad and, you know, open some apps and download something. Who knows what the guy's doing on the iPad? Anyway, the enemy's going to kill you while you're doing that. So be cautious about when you're hacking enemy stuff. Perk number two is going to be restock. Now, restock is just pretty self-explanatory. You recharge your lethal and your tacticals every 30 seconds, which is just... It's just so strong. The claymores in this game, I, I didn't ask for this game to be, I didn't ask for this game to be claymore central, you know? It just is. That's the reality. And using restock is amazing, not only for the claymores, but also for whatever uh, tactical you're rocking, which we will talk about in a second. Because tacticals in this game are actually equipment in general. I haven't used equipment for quite some time in COD because of pick 10 systems and different class setups, but it is very, very important. And then the third, third perk, uh, I go with, this one is a choice between shrapnel, which gives you an extra piece of lethal equipment. So you'd start off with two claymores, which can be very good if you want to get uh, kills consistently every life, or you have an area you want to block off two entrances to, or battle hardened, which basically reduces uh, the, the strengths of flashes and stuns and EMP uses. So that is sort of your tack mask if you want to stay alive for a long streak, which uh, not many people are doing because the game just came out. Uh, you can rock with battle hardened instead. And of course, the thing about this is I would probably just go in with shrapnel, and because of how cool it is in this game, that you can edit your class setup in the game, like in the actual match, you can just quickly, oh, I'm getting stunned every life. Oh, just switch over to Battle Hardened and have a whale of a time, right? Next, we're gonna go into the lethals, and with the lethals, uh, of course, Claymore is what I rock because self-explanatory, it's just it's just so powerful. Whether you're rushing or camping, if you know the rush routes, if you know basically routes that people take, you place these down in an inconspicuous area, boom, free kills. And then the tactical, I like to rock with the flash grenade up into the level where you get the stim. And the stim shot in this game Game is fairly interesting. Honestly, with the stim shot, it's not like BO4. You get two of these stim shots and then you get more as you're refreshing through restock, right? It ain't like BO4. It's much slower than BO4. There's no need to use it every single time. It also re -sprint, refreshes your sprint as well. But this is something that's very helpful in a game that has a pretty slow health regen. Popping that can really help you out. And that's another reason why I like to run either sleight of hand on my perk for the weapon for the early levels or uh, extend it. And I usually run a sleight of hand up until you get 50 extended extended mag or 60 extended mags and the reason why I like extended mags uh, you know you could say sleight of hand gives you no no cons to sleight of hand however the con is especially if, if you're running stim shot you get into this sort of weird scenario like you were in BO4 where some of these tough gunfights am I gonna stim shot and heal am I gonna reload am I gonna shoot them there's too many choices going on in a simple game like Call of Duty I like if uh, to have the extended mags you know once I've upgraded enough to 50 or 60 extended mags don't really have to worry about that and I could focus just on the gunfights and then if you get uh, up to a high enough level to get stim shot, focus on that as well. So that's some stuff I would talk about as far as this class setup. Uh, before you unlock stim shot, definitely flash grenade is the way to go. The only thing about flash grenades is sometimes I get baited by them if I get a hit marker on the enemy and then I rush in and then they kill you and you're like, what happened? I thought they were flashed and you watch the kill feed and you only got sort of a half flash on them. So it, it, I don't know if there's any way to tell on that, but just be cautious when you are flashing your enemies and make sure you're getting that full on hit, banking them off of walls into buildings or whatever you want to do into rooms to be able to max out and do the best you can. Anyway, that's what we rock as far as the perks and the lethals. We'll go ahead and talk about all the attachments. I know this is a longer video, but this is a really important gun. Um, I'll probably try to make class up videos shorter in the future, but I wanted to uh, go really in depth for you guys, talk about not only what I use, but my, my decision-making process behind it. So you can either agree with me or you can say, you know what? You're an idiot, goblin. Why do you use claymores, you camper? What are you doing? I'm the best player ever. I rock pro proximity mimes and my mom's gonna buy me the new game for Christmas. Christmas. Whatever you want to say, it doesn't matter. You know, I just talk about my best stuff. And of course, everyone's class up. You might have to alter a couple different things. If you're someone that doesn't like to use claymores for some reason, you might have to switch things up. If you don't like the stim shot or if you don't like the flash, you might want to use a stun grenade. It really doesn't matter. Uh, the main thing is that you have a strong class up. So we'll go ahead and get right into the attachments, breaking those down and um, enjoy.
I also want to add a note right here before we get into the attachments that this class up that I'm giving you guys uh, where I talk about how much I like the default site and the site that comes with this variant as well um, is more for 6v6 and 10v10 which I've been playing mostly since the game came out. Now I know this game is it's got some sort of battlefield style to it with the ground war which I have been playing a little bit as well and of course in those modes you might want to use an ACOG scope all the way to a red dot or a hybrid site but in my personal opinion there's just so many different play styles as of right now that I want to leave the optics up to you guys. You know, if you play at the back of the map, maybe you're an ACOG player. If you, uh, you know, have trouble with the iron sights, of course, feel free to use a red dot on this thing. Uh, there's so many different optics that at this point, until I test out way more of them, I'm going to leave that one up to you guys, but say that I do like the iron sights and the default sights, but you will see me definitely experimenting with these uh, scopes in the future, and I'm totally not against using scopes on longer range maps. I actually uh, recommend it myself. Anyway, let's get into this and show the attachments. Enjoy. What is up guys? So when it comes down to the attachments with this M4A1, we're going to get into it and talk about everything you need to know in regards to this gun, what you want to use as you're leveling it up, and what the max best class up will be with this M4A1, because this is a weapon that is super duper strong in this game, and you really want to have a really good class up for it. So if you do have that XRK M4 that I talked about earlier in the video from purchasing digitally, this is how the variant will come. It will have a different camo on it, whatever, the, the camo that comes with the variant but it'll come decked out with five attachments straight up. And these are the attachments it will come with. So if you're building your class up off of that, we can start right here. Even if you're building your class up and you don't have that variant at all because maybe you bought the game, uh, you bought a, a, a disc from GameStop or however you got the game if you didn't get it digitally, it still doesn't matter because all of these attachments that are available on this variant are still available through the game. You just have to grind a little bit more and earn them. So the first thing you want to switch as soon as you get this is the stock. The M16 stock you do not want to use. You do not want to give up your straight speed for aim stability that is pretty whack you want to go mainly in the stock category with this one which is the sin guard arms invader it gives you that ads walk movement speed which is basically your strafe speed and in a game where footsteps are so loud and a lot of the gunfights are i mean the strafe speed is already so slow this speeds it up just a tiny bit and a lot of the gunfights you're going to be aiming down sights around corners whoever gets that first shot in so you can't unaim down sight gets the kill because of the fast time to kill i like the sin arms arms invader and it also isn't too hard to unlock as it is the second one available on that. Next when it comes to the optic sight, uh, honestly I go with nothing on this. I don't want to use the uh, hybrid sight that comes with it. That can be good if you're playing on a big big map or you're playing in a, a ground war or something like that. But personally I like the iron sights on this weapon. I like the default sights and I also like the sights which are different on this variant. Um, I like both of them and I think this weapon, especially in a game where using any of these, I mean these things are absolutely awesome but when I'm usually using the class up on uh, you know 6v6 10v10 and occasionally ground war. I'm trying to take my gunfights at medium range to close range. Uh, so if I was, you know, if I'm playing something and trying to play at super long range, of course I'll throw in one of these weird sights. But honestly, I just like the default sight, especially in a game that punishes you by slowing your ADS speed if you choose to use a sight. So that's what it goes with as far as stock the sin guard. Optic, I rock with nothing. Laser. Now this is what's amazing. It comes with the TAC laser. This will come default on your class setup if you have this variant. And it is a uh, really, really late unlock. Uh, uh, unlock in the actual levels. So this is really good. You kind of get ahead by having this variant, honestly. And TAC Laser is amazing. You get three positives on this weapon uh, because it's nice to speed up a weapon like this because it just, I don't know, everything in this game feels a little bit slow, especially because a lot of the punishments the cons you're getting on these uh, different attachments. The negative with this is your laser is visible to enemies, which shouldn't be too much of a problem because honestly, um, you're not trying to take those close gunfights. And usually if they can see your laser, they can probably hear you anyway with your footsteps. I'll talk about out in a second if you don't want to run the TAC laser what you can swap out. The FFS barrel is what it comes with as far as on that variant but personally I like to go with the stock M16 Grenadier. This gives you damage range, bullet velocity, and recoil control, which is amazing on a weapon like this. Now, of course, it punishes you a little bit with the ADS speed and the movement speed, which, I mean, that sucks, but that's just the way it works in this game. I think the stock M16 Grenadier is absolutely awesome. It's pretty much all I've been rocking as far as the barrel on this one. I did use the FFS a little bit, but I, I'm really liking the stock M16 Grenadier. And the thing about this is also, when you get up to level 59, you can upgrade it to the Corvus Custom Marksman, which the description is literally identical. So I'm just assuming this 
this one, I mean, it's unlocked way, way later in the levels. It's got to be better somehow. It says this one has a 19-inch barrel instead of a 20-inch barrel. So I, I don't know what the difference that makes, but I'm assuming this variant is going to, or this one is going to be better because it is unlocked later. If it was worse, that would literally make no sense. Uh, so this is the one that you want to upgrade. You basically just switch your stock M16 Grenadier, rock with that until your weapon is level 59, and then switch over to the Corvus uh, is definitely a good way to go. Then next we have the under barrel. Uh, it'll come default with the Commando foregrip, which is the first one unlocked, but honestly, it's my favorite. You get the recoil stabilization and the aiming stability, which is just a little bit of help to a weapon that doesn't have a lot of recoil, but it just holds it in place. And especially when you're going crazy, especially with extended mags, heavyweight angled grip keeps the weapon steady while aiming. So I really like that Commando foregrip, even though it's upload, it's really, really early in the uh, setup. You could have other stuff like um, controlling more vertical recoil, something like this, the operator foregrip, which is the last unlocked, but you give up ADS speed, and honestly, I don't really have any problem with the vertical recoil with this weapon. So that's why I, I definitely like to go with this. Movement speed isn't as punishing as ADS speed, in my opinion, uh, especially on a weapon like this where you aren't going to, you know, you're not trying to rush around too much and do uh, too many crazy things. Next is ammunition. Now, with ammunition, it's pretty self explanatory. You want to use 50 round mags as soon as you unlock it, and then you want to swap that out to 60 round mags once you unlock that. You lose movement speed again, you lose ADS speed, but in a game where you can be facing 10 to like 32 enemies sometimes is ridiculous. Having that uh, 60 round mag is very, very, very important. And that's what I like to rock with as far as the setup here. So TAC laser, Corvus custom, uh, normal stock, 60 round extended mags, and a commando foregrip. Now, other ways you can customize this class setup, because of course, not everyone is going to, the way the setups work in this game, as you're leveling up, you know, if you don't have these things unlocked, obviously you won't be able to use them. So what are some other things that are really good? Or what are some uh, sub substitutions you can make? Now, the TAC laser, if you don't want to use this because the laser is visible to enemies and you find that that is getting you killed over and over, one thing that you can do is you can basically swap this out for something else. And the other things that I would swap for would either be the monolithic suppressor, which is a late, late unlock level 58, but gives you sound suppression and damage range, which is huge. The way suppressors work on this game, it, they're not as important, but having that sound suppressor which, without really costing you too much because you're improving the damage range instead of hurting it like it would in previous CODs is a pretty big deal. So I think that's a good way to go if you want to swap that out. So at a really high level, honestly, this is the class up I would rock as you're leveling up the weapon if you're going off of the variant. But when you hit to a really high level, of course, you upgrade to the Corvus. At, that would be around level 59. And then once you get to level 58, you open up the option for this, a monolithic suppressor. And at level 60, you open up the option for the stipled grip tape, which gives you ADS speed, sprint to fire speed. So at that point, it is really, really worth swapping out. And that's usually when I will take and go with uh, taking off the commando foregrip and switching that to the rear grip for the stipled grip tape. It really just makes sense when you hit that level 60 and you have a weapon that's super duper powerful. Uh, stipled grip tape really is for more up close, ADS speed and the sprint to fire speed. And if you wanted to take it the other way and instead of going up close, uh, take it for going far range, obviously you'd want to take off the tack laser because this helps you only up close and you'd want to go with the monolithic suppressor. So that's basically how you do it. This would be the class up if you're going for basically range, right? You'd have the monolithic suppressor, which grants you that extra damage at range. Corvus Custom, once you upgrade from the M16 Grenadier. I know these class steps are kind of kind of complicated this year, but that's why I'm making these videos, right? Stock, the Syngard Arms Invader, I just like to have that one. No stock can be nice as well, but that's more of you're just going full on rushing. I, I really like having a bit of stock. I've always been a stock guy with assault rifles. And then the stipled grip tape and the 60 round mag. This is a really good class step if you're trying to play it more for uh, a range sort of setups. And then if you want to take it the other way and you don't want to, you know, this is pretty much just for range, the monolithic suppressor. You can go completely the other way and just take that off instead uh, and put on the TAC uh, laser, which takes you to basically the other way of going close range. So uh, that's the way I would rock it. Either way, this class setup for close range, the one I just showed you for long range, this weapon is super duper strong. You will be missing out. You can see, you know, whatever you're doing, you're going to miss out on some things. Specifically perks I leave off on this weapon. There's nothing that's really great. I mean, sleight of hand can be awesome. And you can maybe rock that instead of the 60 rounds. But 
but I just really like having 60 rounds. Extended mags, even though it punishes you a little bit with the ADS and the movement speed, being able to spray down multiple enemies and not get caught when they are, you know, the spawns can be kind of intense in this game, especially in 10v10, which is a game mode that I've been playing a lot. I like to go with that 60 round mag and of course 50 until you upgrade to 60. Hopefully you guys did help, uh, hopefully this did help you guys out. This is basically how you want to do it with these attachments on this M4A1. I think this weapon is the best gun in the game. Who knows if it will get a nerf, but this weapon is amazing. Even at the early levels as you're leveling it up, up to the really, really late levels. You know, a lot of the things you use like Commando Foregrip, the stock, um, and the, of course, if you have the, or the M16 Grenadier, and then if you have the variant, even the TAC laser is given to you at a very, very early round, which is a, a pretty significant advantage when you get this stuff basically for free, um, or not for free, I guess you had to pre or whatever, purchase the game digitally, but you basically get a sort of an advantage by having this variant. That's what we go with as far as the M4A1. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. Uh, once again, here is the class up right here, uh, swapping out if we're going for more long range, we take off the laser and we rock with the monolithic support. Suppressor. This right here is what we like to rock. Monolith monolithic suppressor, Corvus Custom, 60 round mag, stipled grip tape, and a nice stock. Really, really awesome class up here. You can't go wrong. Of course, you're going to have to level this thing up. Hit around like level 60 or 50, yeah, 60 before you'll have this exact class it up. But on those ways leveling up, especially with that variant, uh, I think a lot of the stuff I just talked about should be able to help you guys out. Anyway, thanks for watching. Drop a like on this video. Be sure to test this class setup out when you do hit that max level. And let me know your thoughts on this weapon and other weapons you want to see class setups for down in the comment section down below. This year, it's really, really complicated with the attachments, you know, the perks and uh, equipment and secondary stuff. I can kind of handle that and that can be explained pretty quickly, but I really have to go in depth and cover the attachments because I can't just say, if I just did the video and said, here, right here, this is the best class setup. A lot of you guys would say, well, what do I do from level zero to 60, right? And that's why I want to really make a little sort of guide and uh, guide people by using the variant as well as just, you know, telling you which early unlocks are very, very good to use. Thanks for watching. Drop a like, subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one and I'm out. Peace.